about Justin, big bull in the middle. <laughs> uh, but we have a special guest, uh, Demo in the Flesh is with us today. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Very, Appreciate you. very, 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 very interested guest. Um, really, uh, you've been around a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, we played basketball together, you've been at the gym a couple times, but I don't really know uh, much about you, yeah. you know, so this is going to be a very, very good interview for me to find out more about Oh, there's a brother that was yeah. out there. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> let's jump right into it. And I think a good spot to start is, you know, we just introduced him as Demo in the flesh. Uh, but how'd that name come about? Uh, uh, it's funny. The name came from a friend and I being interested in the arts, you know what I mean? Kind of looking up comic books and keeping up with the storylines. And signing up on the website, rather than creating a username, it asks you to create your superhero name. Mm -hmm. So Demo was just kind of like my, you know, superhero version of myself. You know what I mean? Like what I imagine myself being like in Marvel Comics or something like okay, that. Okay. Okay. And the In the Flesh just kind of came from wanting to separate myself from the thousands of other demos, you know, that are out there. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. the in the Flesh is just like, I'm here in the moment. Yeah, it flows, flesh. man. Yeah. It flows. And that originated, that whole demo... Uh, persona um, originated where? where? Where were you at? Uh, I was living in Connecticut at the time. So this right. is yeah, this is like back in the 7 I, I came up with that. Right. And it kind of just stuck. And that's where you grew up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. How's life? Uh, what, what city? Uh, I grew up in Stratford. Yeah, how, Stratford how is Connecticut. Stratford, Connecticut? How is that? It's funny because Stratford is a lot like uh, Bristol, you know what I mean? So uh, another uh, suburban, yeah. for all our people at home, another <laughs> suburban town, area. Right, right. Straight up, um, when I ride around Bristol, I can see like different parallels. I'm like, oh, that reminds me of you know back home. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, so you're not honorary young black suburban. You are a young black suburban. Straight up, and, yeah. and and we we got we get these privileges that you know some other people don't get. Yeah. Um, what introduced you into being an artist or going into that? Uh, filled in that area of your life? Uh, I, I was always doodling, you know what I mean? And I, I just liked to create um, when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I was always drawing, again, like Wolverine, X-Men stuff, yeah, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. Uh, I, I was, I, you know, as a kid, I was always into the muscles. I wanted the muscles, and you know what I mean? I wanted to draw myself with the muscles. So right, right. just kept practicing. <laughs> cool. And, like, did you, is this something that you are self-taught or did you go to school for art? Um, it's mostly self-taught and then like I did, you know, the art classes in high school and uh, up until recently it was something I hadn't done in a while, you know what I mean? But uh, I got a, I got one of those iPads, you know, I'm, I'm constantly drawing on the program uh, Procreate and, uh, and it just allows me to express myself. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. So he's, you were talking about the arts and drawing. I've also, that's how we kind of been able to connect yeah. and been hanging out a lot. You also are doing a lot in the music world. Yeah, so uh, I think best place to start is how'd you even get into the music world? And then we talk about your projects and stuff. Yeah, um, I, with the music, it was always something that I did growing up. You know what I mean? I got, I found myself singing, but I was real shy about it. You know what I mean? And then in high school, I would have people tell me to pursue it. And I just kind of was like, oh, you guys being nice. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. You know, I, I can't make it, you know? And uh, when I got older, and you know, I saw that when the you way got your first girl off of it, <laughs> 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 he was like, "Oh, yeah. wait, wait a minute, I got, uh, I got something here." <laughs> right? No, man, it was. Uh, it was it, when I saw that the music industry was changing and how you could get in. When I saw that you could do it yourself and just right, kind right, of be right, online right. about it, that's when I got uh, interested and okay. was like, "You know what? Let me pursue this." So kind of like us with the podcast. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So you came around at the right time where you mm -hmm. said, "Look." This isn't impossible. You yeah, know, I can do it myself, and you taking on that. That's like a, a different generation of uh, artist, isn't it? Yeah. Where you don't need a manager or a middleman. Uh, you can just go and book your own shows and, and, Straight up, and man. do what you want. Is that how you uh, go about things? Are you, yeah, that's how. Imagining been, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I've been going about. Uh, I've had to do a lot of research, watching a lot of YouTube videos. Um, it it's a uh, it's a lot of work, but it uh, it's it's worth it. You know what I mean? And I, I'm kind of learning about the industry, you know, myself, and I'm learning. Sometimes I, I mess up, you know what I'm saying? But I learn from that too. You know what I mean? Right, things right, don't right. always go my way, but exactly. I just keep moving forward. Yeah. Cool. So what are new projects 
uh, what projects have you had and what new projects you have anything coming out soon? yeah yeah um when I first started I kind of was just on a single way you know what I mean I was just dropping songs right, and, right. you know just trying to push them and my upcoming project uh, titled uh, Astral Odyssey um, was something that I really the peep the sweatshirt <laughs> right here yeah. yeah you know what I mean um, it was just something that I, I kind of thought of over quarantine you know in the beginning like it was a lot of Call of Duty and, and chilling and uh, I just wanted to do something productive with my time right, right, and um, I just felt like this project is a, is a real good way for me to be like, hey, this is what I'm about. It's, uh, you know, my brand, you know what I mean? Like right, when I was right, dropping right. the singles, it was just like some random stuff. I want to tell a story with my art, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Um, so what are some of your influences, you know? what? Everybody like me, I, I like Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely grew up on MJ. MJ is definitely yeah. an influence. And, and what about somebody that we might not know or somebody, uh, mm. You know, you mentioned I, covers before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely like. Um, I mean, I grew up with the Teddy P's, you know, Teddy Pendergrass, uh, Marvin Gaye. My dad always played the stuff. I was gonna stuff. say most of our parents is yeah. uh, jams <laughs> and stuff like right? that. Yeah. Yeah. Sade. I, I I like uh, the current artists. I like um, I like Snow Allegra. You know what I mean? Okay. I uh, I appreciate like uh, An Alina Baraz, okay. um, Sid the Kid from the Internet. You know what I mean? Those are I like. Music from different genres. Right, I like right. you know hearing different things and putting those influences into my yeah, music. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, we talk a lot about getting different influences from like traveling in different countries yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, you're from Connecticut. You're down in Bristol now. This is your home base yeah. and stuff. What are you taking from Bristol? That uh, is giving you, a, you know, the vibe that we see today, the demo that we see today. What, what, what is Bristol contributing to that? Um, I. It's funny because when I first came to Bristol, I just saw like a, a real tiny town with a lot of like old people in it. You know what I mean? And to watch how much this town has grown. You know what I'm saying? And and business wise, and just the people that are hanging around. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're starting to see like a younger influence, a younger generation stepping out being more active and involved in the community. Right, right. So um, it's weird, like I feel like I'm just growing with the, with the city, you know what right. I mean, or with the town and the, with the local businesses, you know, my shows has been a big influence with that as well, you right. know what I mean? How long have you been in, in uh, the area? Uh, since like 2015, you okay, know. Okay, cool. I'm sure. sure people have been seeing my beard float around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and you, you touched on maestros, you touched on the beard right now, perfect mm -hmm, yeah. segue to uh, speak about Maestro's. Uh, yeah, basically how you got hooked up there and started going there. Yeah, 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 man, the the online community, you know what I mean? It was just, when I first started growing my beard, it was like... Can you explain to our viewers what Maestro's is that they, they might not know? Oh, uh, Maestro's is the best in beard care. You know what I mean? They're undeniably <laughs> good at crafting a better beard. Okay. But they make uh, beard wash, beard butters, and many different scents. We're working on a whole care line right now. Uh, basically, if you want a better beard, you know, come to Maestro's. Right, right. You know? and, and you were touching on how you got involved. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was like a picture, I think, of my grandmother. You know what I mean? I was hugging her, and I tagged you some beard hashtags. And, you know, a couple minutes later, Maestro's Classic is commenting, telling me to come check them out in Bristol. And this was when I first was in uh, Philly, so I didn't even know what Bristol was, how right, to get right, there. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. I was doing the public transportation, so... It was, uh, it was definitely an experience. You know, I thought I was going to just get some free stuff. And uh, you know what I mean? I didn't think I was going to be meeting something, right. meeting someone and, and be meeting something that was so life-changing. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And, and, and what way, you know? Yeah, like, what, it, what, it, what changed now for you? Like, now, what are we, five years later? Yeah. Still? Um, I mean, it's, it's, I was there from pretty much the, the build-up of the groom speakeasy, you know, that we know now, going to the shop, getting our hair cut. Yeah, we all get our hair cut. We all get our hair cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, dude, I I'll was there my, when that place I'll wear my empty. shirt next time. Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not bad, man. You know. Um, and, and that place, actually, the, the speakeasy where we get our hair cut, actually kind of coincides with your energy, you know, how... Uh, you're just chilling, relaxing. I heard your music is chilling and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, and we and we talked be, before the show about how you want to stay out of certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, is that something that you actively make a part of your life? Um, that low chill. You know, is that how demo is all the time? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that that's what you see is what you get. You know what I mean? There's no. I mean, I, I'm out there, but like, I'm always chill, you know what I mean? Even during tight circumstances. 
Right, right, right. I don't like people seeing me sweat. And I don't think I like to sweat, so it just doesn't happen. Right, <laughs> right. And, and, you know, looking on the outside, um, people look at you, they're probably like, you're an RT guy. But like I said earlier, you know, he was on the court, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. posting us up, you know. <laughs> Jumping around. <laughs> and, and around. Just, you know, uh, a couple of guys over at my shoes, yeah. you know, they come out and, and they hang out. And um, they do a lot in the community, too. Um, you know, are, are you... You're obviously active with a lot of the programs and stuff that they do. Um, do you have something with maestros or even by yourself that uh, you're involved with or that you like to push or just an ideology even? Um, I feel like with, just with everything that we do, we're, we're constantly spreading the news about crafting a better you. Mm -hmm. So to me, maestros isn't a beard, a beard care company. It's more of a lifestyle company, you know what I mean? Because we encourage you to be a maestro in every aspect of life, right. whether it's love, art. You know what I mean? Your fitness. Um, there's just many aspects that you can do at work. You know what I mean? Just giving everything that you can the best. You know, effort that you know you can. Exactly. So Maestro's has really kind of, in a way, helped you to explore everything you kind of have a passion in. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. We touched on earlier. You have your new project, Astro Odyssey, coming out. Mm -hmm. See the design on your sweatshirt. Could you sure. explain to us, kind of? The project and also the themes behind the design. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is, I feel like this is what the astral plane is about. It's, uh, you know, me with the rings around it. I'm probably high off of some, you know, THC. But, uh, you know, there's some love right here. I got a little love interest, and it's just me being in the cosmos chilling. That low key vibe. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> so, were you sitting down? Uh one day stone <laughs> and you just put everything together yeah yeah I, uh, on that same art program that i have on the ipad i just doodled this up and uh once again my shows people over at my shows help me out groove smooth and uh just they, yeah they helped yeah. me get the design done and jay martin as well shout out to all of them yeah right. and, and yeah. you're releasing this um is this a, a album yeah it's going to be a whole album there's going to be uh, apparel to go with it cool there's going to be some other surprises as well all right yeah. how many songs uh, 11 songs. 11 songs. Yes. Cool. You have a favorite? Uh, right now, my you, favorite. You got the single? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, yeah, that's probably my favorite. Right now, it's a, a song called First Contact. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, it's funny because the song itself is about my desire to, you know, finally be closer to someone. I wrote it in the beginning of quarantine, but I feel like it's going to be very helpful for the times that we're about to be in as right, well. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. So did you spend a lot of time during quarantine by yourself in that bubble situation? Yeah, or? absolutely. I'm just like, damn, I'm going to cuddle with something. <laughs> 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 I need some love. I need, I need somebody to sing to. Yeah, man. <laughs> so it's just like, yo, I had to get it out somehow. You know what I mean? Right. I just wrote about it. You know what I mean? Cool, cool. And then we were talking uh, before the show as well with the upcoming projects. You have some giveaways that you're trying to uh, mm -hmm. get people to tell them about. Yeah, we'll absolutely. So here now. for this uh, first uh, single that's released in First Contact, I'm doing a giveaway where, you know, basically I'm going to show people my uh, Spotify link. And if they put it on their story or their Instagram that they're following me, you're entered to win a T-shirt, uh, some custom Oreos. I got, I got a good little uh, gift pack yeah. package coming. So uh, I'm gonna have more details on that on the post, but it's gonna be worth it, you know. I'm looking forward for everyone to hear the music. Cool, yeah. now, um, are you going to be releasing it on uh, a certain platform? Or all of them, all yeah, all major, all major Apple, platforms. Apple, Spotify, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to see on YouTube and all that. Absolutely, you got, you it's gonna be videos? visuals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got one video right now, okay. but uh, that was like, that's from uh, like my first phase, like Marvel does the phases. Yeah. First phase was like cool. You saw where they were going, but yeah. as the phase is built up, you start to see the the bigger picture. Right. Yeah, I'm actually, definitely in phase two right now. <laughs> yeah. I got to be in the studio and see him uh, record a couple songs as well. So he definitely uh, tuned in. Make sure you give everybody the handles to follow you. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. We're not yeah. even there yet. We just uh -oh. started. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, saying. Give them a handle uh, one time. Right yeah. Yeah. Give the handle you know, one time. Demo in the flesh. <laughs> it's, you know, written as it's spelled or, you know, spelled yeah. as it sounds, whatever. But, um, yeah, demo in the flesh. D-E-M-O in the flesh. Right. All yeah. spaces. And and um, I didn't get a chance to go that night, um, but there was a concert that Maestro's put yeah. on and, and everything. I've seen a few clips. I've seen you doing your thing. 
Um, can you tell us about that experience? How it feels to be on stage and in front of your peers? And, yeah. And, 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 and you know, letting them see your talent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was fun because as someone who spent a lot of 2019 grinding, going to different open mics every night, um, to have that shutdown, you know, happen and all that stuff be taken away, it was like, damn, I haven't been on stage forever. You know what I mean? So it was kind of, it was exhilarating to be back up there and, right, right. you know, see the people's reactions to the music and. I, you know, put on a show for my friends and my supporters. Right, right. That's, you know, if you're an artist, that's probably like a, a high for you. Oh, you absolutely. Know? You're on the stage. <laughs> and not only that, it was a great setup. It was on the side of the building. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, my yeah. shows, they killed it. Everybody killed it there. Outside, man. you know, um, that's the kind of events that you want to be at. Definitely um, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely Straight outside. Straight up. Um, what's, the, what's the process like for you, though? Um, you know, you... you d does the song just come to you, or do you sit down and you actually draw out uh, what you want to write? Um, uh, so my process, I feel like my process is a little different than other people because, like, I hear a lot of people like to write. Like, they'll write just with no, you know, they just start writing. I don't know. I don't do that. I kind of, like, scour YouTube, uh, and if I hear a beat that I like and it catches my ear, I'm like, what does this remind me of? And I kind of just... You know, bounce ideas out and throw them out right. in the air and see which one sticks to me. Right, right. And once I get a vibe, I start writing lyrics, and then it's usually a rap from there. Right. You know what I mean? It just flows, mm -hmm. right? Um, and same with art. Is that uh, so? The art is a little different okay. with the visual art, just because I'm I'm very picky about my visuals. You know what I mean? And with myself, I kind of allow myself a little breathing room to kind of screw up a little bit, and you know, allow myself to grow and learn. Right, right. But um, yeah, I definitely take way more time with my visual art. You know what I right, mean? Because right. I want that to be perfect you yeah know. you know that's something where if you make a mistake or if it looks weird people are just gonna you know? see it you know yeah. you can make a mistake with your lyrics and mm -hmm. people think that that's the way it's supposed to Straight be up. or you might come up with something dope you know what yeah. I mean making that mess up so but. for me um I, I'm not like a art uh like connoisseur or anything yeah. like that but I do have my artists that I like um I definitely like Andy Warhol you ever okay. know him and Banksy Banksy. Oh, uh, okay. Everybody right, yeah. knows Banksy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like them because they really stood out and really had a message and really stood for something. Uh, Banksy is still alive and he's still doing uh, phenomenal work. Yeah. Um, do you have artists that you look up to, you know, people that uh, influence you to, to, to go a certain route? Hmm. I feel like I have, like, comic book artists. Like, I liked, I liked Jim Lee's, uh, like, 90s-style right, right. artwork growing up. Um, but I, I feel like my art influences are more personal. Like my best friend growing up, the one who I created the name Demo with, Anaton, he was always like drawn with me, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So my style was more based off of imagination where that dude could draw Justin right here, every de damn detail is right, like right, perfect, right, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Uh, people like uh, my boy Rude Boy, you know, who's also one of Maestro's classic barbers, talented, phenomenal sculptor, painter, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. People who are multifaceted like that, those are the ones who strive me to be better. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's the maestro way. You know exactly, what I mean? Exactly, exactly. It's funny how that happens. Mm -hmm. like sometimes the people that are closest to you are the people that push you. Yeah. You know, the hardest. Um, for me, it was my father. Uh, obviously, he's a professional fighter. Um, I had no choice. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. <laughs> um, 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 I didn't really have too many uh, friends that were doing the same thing. But um, when I had my extracurricular activities, like... You know the things I did for fun, yeah. the music and stuff. It definitely was the people that were closer to me, rather than a Jay Z, yeah. rather than a you know a Nas. So I can definitely relate uh, to that. Um, we were also so we were talking about your art, and so what are some of your other interests? I know you spoke yeah. on food. Oh yeah, I love food. Yeah, yeah. Any, so there are some other things <laughs> that interest demo. Uh, definitely food. I, I'm a. I feel like I'm a natural photographer. I love the idea of chasing a shot, you know what I mean? I love street photography. That's yeah. definitely my thing, street photography. Yeah, I love just going to Philly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this would be dope for, you know, this video. Um, I just, I love getting inspiration, you know what I mean? And I feel like inspiration is all around you at all times, just how you look at things. Right. right. Um, so do you have any aspirations to uh, maybe travel outside of uh, what your norm was? Like, going to LA like a lot of other people do or you know traveling to New York yeah you kind of I guess from 
Connecticut to hear you pass through New York. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was going to New York a lot. I feel like before the before the shutdown, right? And uh, I, even in New York, like New York is not uh, off limits for me for like just popping up on an open mic and you know going there to do some songs. Um, and I feel like with traveling outside, it just depends on how all this turns out. You know right. what I mean? I mean, I'm open to going anywhere. You know, as right. long as I know that I can, you know, show my art, I'm with it. You know, I would love to do LA. I got my cousins out there. I got friends that would love to see me come out, and I would love to see what happens. I actually think. Now I'm talking to you about that, that you could get way more views doing an online concert yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, a, yeah, a lot of comedians are Then doing an open mic. Doing yeah. everything podcast, you know, uh, online. It's a hard sell for certain groups, but I feel like an online open mic would uh, be... Use the maestro platform. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That'd be something to look into. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll, I'll manage. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, so you know, we touched on that. We touched on your cooking. Uh, what about you know your uh, your support system around here? You know, I know you got maestros and stuff. Are you the only man around here, or do you have family members? Or yeah. You have a wife? No, no, no. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <saying? man>? <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, well, I ain't married, but. Uh, when I moved down to uh, Philly, uh, my family uh, ended up moving here like shortly after. It was like you know six months, and uh, they were in Philly as well. So my parents had like been to my shows. My sister was living here before she moved to Puerto Rico. Okay. She would be at the shows. My brother's out in the Bronx, but I see him fairly regularly. So right, right. Yeah, well, I'm close to my family. So are you uh, in the middle of your uh, siblings? Or? Oh no, no, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. <laughs> so. The oldest is also the, you, the you, to me, you seem like the, uh, I'm trying to pick the right word, uh, a nomad isn't a good word. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, somebody, like you're traveling and yeah. you're, you're a free spirit. Yeah, you know? yeah, straight up. Uh, is that something that's in the the, the whole household of Denver? So or, definitely, uh, uh, my sister definitely um, has that in her as well. Uh, it's funny because uh, uh, when I moved from Connecticut, I actually ended up in Hawaii. So like that's what got me started. I wanted to leave home and try something new. And my sister was actually out there with me, you know what I mean? And she's doing more traveling now. So like I said, she moved to Puerto Rico. So right, she right, kind of got right. tired of the city life and wanted to do something new. And she's also pursuing her visual art. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, what kind of, same, similar? Oh, or? no, she, she's a painter. Yeah, yeah, she's doing the, the real stuff, you know what I mean? Right, that's right. cool. Yeah, it's cool yeah. to see. So artistic, mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. cool. And is that, are your parents artistic, or? Uh, I remember my mom drawing, like, Fred Flintstone and stuff, and it looked <laughs> good, you know what I mean? Like, but I, I don't, yeah, like, yeah, I would say yes, like, because there's other people in my family that are artistic, you know right. what I mean? My brother does music. Right. I got cousins that draw, and we're all kind of, we all have our things, you and know and what I mean? Your, and your, you mentioned your Teddy Pendergrass and your parents. And they got good ears. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> true. You know, it, we, did you have a household, like, where you woke up on Saturday and your parents were already playing music? Oh, absolutely. Or, yeah? Absolutely. And Blaring that, not giving a damn who's sleeping, you know what right, I mean? That's right, the wake-up right, call. Right. <laughs> and um, education-wise, um, how was going to school in Stratford? Uh, it was cool, but uh, I mean, I was I was like that traditional Christian home, so it was very, like, stricter uh, upbringing, you know what I mean? So I didn't really go out too much. I would do my sports, mm -hmm. come home from school, and, you know, probably hop on the Xbox for a little bit, and that's it, you know? Train, do some boxing. That was back in my days when I was right. trying to throw hands, you know what I mean? Connecticut is big for uh, boxing. A lot yeah. of people don't know. Um, they have a couple, Marvin Hagler is from... Uh, no, he's from Massachusetts. Or is he? he? Or Connecticut. One there is a lot of gyms, though, in, yeah, in, yeah, in CT. Um, I, knew the, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the Rosas. They have a gym out in New Haven, Connecticut. Nah, they no. had a trainer named Gaspar Ortega. He was an old school bull. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I think he had, like, the most fights. Um, Ever? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, his record was ridiculous. Right, right. Yeah, we got to look him up after the show's up. Uh, yeah, over. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me one <laughs> class. This is gave he... me a shot to the body. I was like, this old head <laughs> just freaking jammed my ribs up. This is where we need our producer, Jordan, to be over there on his laptop. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Uh, uh, Gaspar Ortega. And, um, so, you got an interest in boxing a little bit. Uh, when I was younger, I did. You know what I mean? It was more so the... Be in shape. I like doing different things to, to be in shape. You know what I mean? Uh, 
the typical weights and you know just lift things up and down okay. it doesn't do it for Four me I like running around okay Jordan Gaspar Ortega <laughs> <laughs> he don't even have a picture in color yeah bro he was old he was old when I went that day Orthodox he's 85 years old now welterweight Six. Gaspar Ortega was a Mexican professional boxer and is considered one of the best welterweight boxers from Mexico let's see his box rec this is Demo's old boxing coach. Yeah, he for, for, for a day. So, yeah. <laughs> 100, 131 fight. Uh, 76 wins, 39 losses. And he only been knocked out two of those 39. Oh, wow. Times. All right. So, uh, when the, you don't even know if it's a knockout. He's, he's, it was stopped. Only two out of 39 losses and six draws. You know, this, to me, 39. you know, looking at his uh, record, he was busy. He must have turned uh, pro at like 16 yeah. or something like they do in Mexico yeah. and he's probably fighting that first like every week or something yeah. like that <laughs> <laughs> you know um, and then you know I guess the older you get the harder it is to keep doing that yeah um, he was an interesting coach because I didn't understand a word he was saying it was like a it was like Spanish mumble and I'm just like alright he just showed me the form and that was it, you know. He hit you with a shot. Yeah, oh yeah. Show me a proper way to throw a body shot. I'm like, All right, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> took advantage. Took advantage. <laughs> Where did you pick up your ball skills at? That uh, again, like the beginning stages of the internet. I was like, I wanted to be able to dunk. I wanted to be able to just be better. So this is what like when the N one tapes were out too. So I was watching those. Um, hot sauce. Yeah, yeah, hot sauce. Yeah, uh, yeah, the professor. professor yeah, yeah, all those dudes. That man. was all big up in yeah. the Northeast. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, so bro. I was practicing every day. Yeah, every day. My handles like dribbling in between yeah, chairs, yeah, doing yeah, it with yeah. a tennis ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was just my love for the, you know basketball. I wanted to. Kobe was my favorite growing up. You know what I mean. So I always wanted that play style, and uh, just felt like that was the way to do it. Just to you know play and practice. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you got something more to ask him? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, I was just, I was just, I just had like a Kobe moment. I was thinking like RP Kobe. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so now we've been on the court and stuff. So what, what are your other sports interests, other art interests? I think we touched on all the yeah, stuff that he's a football demo. player. You like football? I do. I uh, I enjoyed My football bad. more I when I was younger. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to do that to you. No, no, no. I do. I, I I played like in the flag leagues, but in high school, like I was I was a little squirt. You know what I mean? So like that wasn't the the drunk. I I played in freshman year, but I never even like my parents decided to send me to like church camp rather than the football camp. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it wasn't something that was in the cards for me. So what? That's a good like, <clears throat> touching on the young black suburban. So mm -hmm. what was that kind of suburban Connecticut life? Uh, kind of basically uh, what, you know, was it the kind of the things we're seeing now, the racism issues, you know, you're, we, we're in Bristol together a lot. Yeah. The Trump flag mm -hmm. driving down the, road, <laughs> yeah. the parkway and all those. So what, what was that experience up there? I, I, I personally don't know much about being up there. Too. Yeah. I mean, I uh, my son's godfather lives up there. Um, and he's old, old school. You know, like, he, actually, he's like 70 years old. Mm. Oh, and, okay. Uh, I mean, he, he's lived all over the world. He's lived in Canada. He's from North Carolina. So when you hear him talk, his name is Diego. When you hear him talk, his accent is just all is messed up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, for some reason, he won't leave uh, Connecticut. You know, that's his, right, that's it's, his hard. Oh, it's hard. Like, it was weird. Like, And it's funny that you ask that because uh, there were a lot of times where I experienced things, especially growing up. You know what I mean? Just some just dumb kids. I feel like yeah. there's, there's not much to do when you're growing up in Connecticut. So... A lot of people are trying to just do shit that they see on movies. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're trying to trap. They're trying to. They everybody thinks they're tough, so everybody just wants to fight. There's definitely a lot of fighting and stuff like that. But the 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 things that I saw with the racism, like especially with like the police. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Like there was times where I just felt singled out because like I'm in a group with you know seven white dudes, and then I'm the one black kid. And like, what the hell are you doing here? You know what I mean? I'm like, I live around the corner, actually. So uh -huh. it's uh. It was a lot, you know what I mean, because you have you got it from that angle, and then you had people who just would talk shit and then throw out the N-word, and then you're just like, all right, now we got to throw hands, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. And then that's why the boxing came into play. Right, right. <laughs> so that's how you handled it, by getting in shape and, and making sure that you were protecting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, was there any, like, real, like, 
instances where you felt like maybe you weren't safe or weren't, weren't uh, you know, wanted in, in that area? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, was a, uh, there was a town called Milford where, like, I, that's where I was like, all right, I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? Because it just seemed like every weekend cops were like, oh, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, questioning me or surrounding me when we're all trying to get home from a bar and, like, mm-hmm. people are fighting and then I'm getting blamed or I felt like I was getting blamed. Uh, and just to make things better, you know what I mean? I was like, I got to get out of here. Because nobody ever wanted to leave or do anything new or interesting. You know what I mean? It's just the same. <coughs> kind of stay, stay yeah. in that area. Right. Yeah. And it's crazy because you're like an artist, you know. You come from a Christian family. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one point that I like to make to people is that that doesn't matter uh, when you leave your house. You know, people still, the first thing they see is your exterior. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you get that little... Uh, pre-notion now it's not just uh people from other we do it to ourselves sometimes yeah, you know yeah. I, i'll be honest if justin was walking down the street i'm like oh shit <laughs> if I didn't, if I didn't, but look we know justin and, yeah. and, and you know that that's not his mo you yeah know? absolutely so and that's um, another thing you know, we me and him touch on a lot you know you have your experiences being black in the suburbs and then you have your experiences being black from the suburbs going into the city so did you I know you touched on you did the boxing so did you have instances where you went on the city I know personally I went when I would go to the city I would always get made fun of until they they saw me play basketball mm-hmm. with them then they would respect me what were some instances you maybe have um you went through that I uh, see what's that I feel like because I didn't I, I moved to Philly when I in 2013 I didn't really have much city experience you know what I mean oh, okay. so by the time I I, it's, I was watching videos of Philadelphia before I moved here, and like I'm seeing cops beating people's asses, I'm like, God damn, this is where I'm going. And then when I got there, I'm just like, I've never had any incidents with yeah. a dude where I thought we were gonna throw hands. Like it's never even gotten to that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's usually something that is settled with words or it's just bullshit. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I love Philly. You know Especially what I mean? Especially <laughs> if you are in the art scene in Philadelphia or whatever, I think that you own. Um, have a have a better chance in those areas, even though it, it is bad in, in a lot of areas. If you go into like South Street or you know, you, you'll be all right. A lot of people that get into stuff in Philadelphia are people that are looking for it. Mm-hmm. You know, people that are involved in that type of stuff. Absolutely. Um, you never been to Kensington, huh? I have. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> there's, <laughs> there's, there's a couple studios there. The, the I said absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> 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 I hope not in a way. <laughs> I hope not in a way yeah, that uh, uh, Kensington's per- portrayed, but that's that's the hub, you know, um, where the, the a lot of the drugs that come from South America come through Philadelphia to Kensington and go up to Connecticut. Yeah, you know. Um, how how was your uh, first time you went to Kensington? I used to train down there, and you go underneath the L. Yeah, it, it's busy. I mean, yeah, I've. I felt like I was dodging a runner before that even came around when I got off the train station. I'm like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like, you just see some stuff and you're like, you don't really want to touch anything. You know, I just kind of scurried along down the sidewalk and got to where I needed to go. I was not trying to look at it. I wasn't eating out of the food at the Chinese store there. No, I'm cool. Yeah. It's a different, uh, <laughs> I can imagine being from, you know, somewhere else and, and, and going down there. Um, there's a lot of kids, though. Yeah, I went to high school with that uh, travel down there um, to do what they got to do and come back. Um, unfortunately, uh, and, and Kensington got a lot of people. Yeah, right. they got a lot of people. That's something that the suburbs is dealing with. You know, with uh, people going down there and and ODing and and, and and not coming back. Yeah, and, you know, because the drugs are that bad. Um, it. Did, when your upbringing, um, the drugs and, and the violence and stuff in uh, Stratford, right? That it, Did you see it like that? or you know, uh, and, and We are in a different era, too, where when... Opioids and stuff. Yeah, are big. yeah, when, yeah. When we were five and ten, we really weren't like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like with... The only thing I really experienced was the, the violence, and that was just because we were kids, like, you know what I mean, beating each other up, you know what I mean? But... Uh, the drugs and stuff, I didn't really personally see it just because my friends were really just smoking. I didn't start smoking until you know, I was in my 20s, you know what I mean? Right, so right, I was right. a late bloomer with that. Uh, and 
yeah, it was more, mostly just alcohol, you right. know, and that, that's what I witnessed. But my parents weren't letting me near none of that, you know what I mean? I had to wait till I was 18 and right. get my first sip. <laughs> right, right. And, and so, again, back to your family, did you uh, ever, like, try to join the, the choir in, in, in church or... Was, did you have any like music aspirations in church? Um, I think it was more so just interest, and in, uh, I wasn't very involved in my church. I was like that kid who didn't want to be there. So, the everybody's like clapping and getting down. And I would just be like, you know, Ugh. you know, it was more it was forced uh, for me to be there. <laughs> and uh, it, it, you know, I I go back once in a blue to because I grew up with these people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's there is love for it, but the the whole church as a as a whole, I, I don't really I don't do that anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So the, yeah, getting involved with the choir, I knew that there wasn't a point because I'm like, it wasn't something that I was actively portraying in my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I like to be genuine. Right. Yeah, so I was a little heathen. I, <laughs> the reason why I asked you that question is I wanted to start getting us back into your music and talking about that because we will be playing. Uh, some a segment of one of your songs uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, do you have the song that you want us to play? Um, which, which, which one do you think? Well, we're not gonna play it right not, now. Not right now, no. I was, but, I was just gonna say, we'll but close. you know, I definitely like uh, you know my all time favorite <laughs> Butter Pecan. You know, right. he, uh, that was like really the drunk. first. That was the first song, and you know that gets into kind of the maestros thing and being a maestro. Like, uh, you know, I was sitting there just waiting for my appointment, kind of new in the building, kind of like, all right, and it's COVID, yeah. so I'm like, I'm going to sit over here away from these guys, and then they're over there talking about music, you know, like, I do the music hey. stuff, and he, he popped that on, and I'm like, damn, all right, like, who is this <laughs> great guy? And so, like, you know, that's, and that song definitely still to this day catches my ear, so definitely Butter, oh, be- butter Pecan. pecan. <laughs> but, you know, I think he does want to pr- promote the, al- the album. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike! Brother Mike's here. In the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tap him, tell him to come here? Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, what's the, uh, what, we, what did we, what was I in the studio with you? Oh, that was for another day. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, and I have that that one pretty so, good. Yeah, yeah. All right, we we so what, what can we do like uh we could do because butter pecan of, yeah because butter one, pecan is he's a uh, if he gives us permission we can put whole songs at the end and I can show them off and people can just listen through. Or, or yeah, yeah, a whole song know. yeah with the uh, with your with your tags on it. Ah, uh, word yeah, 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 I always put stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can get them back when we'll be set up. We'll start having performances and shows. Oh, yeah, I'd love. That'd be definitely mm-hmm. great. That'd be definitely great. Um, so, we're about 40 minutes into our interview. Word. This is usually where I like to give people a chance to say what they want to say. You know, if you have any messages you want to give out there or any tags, anything you want to sell, uh, this is your chance mm-hmm. right here. Word. I appreciate it. You know, my, as I said, my Instagram, Demo in the Flesh. Um, basically, what I want to be out there is just, it's love, man. You know what I mean? I'm trying to bring something back uh, with my music that I feel like hasn't been around for a minute. You know what I mean? Just something genuine. I feel like nowadays, it's about like trying to outdo what's already there and a lot of flash and just, you know, no heart. Right, right. And uh, I want people to be in their fields again, you know? I understand. Yeah. And, and, you know, I want to shout out Maestro's Classic for real. That's like, it. I know we've been talking about them a lot today, but yeah. wouldn't even be here for real if it wasn't for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, All of, yeah. You know, like this interview, probably never would have met each other. Mm-hmm. Type thing. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's it for me. Good, yeah. good, good. So, from the young black suburban, <laughs> I don't know how we keep finding all of us. There's a yeah. lot of us out there. <laughs> yeah, you guys let us know. Like, it, you know, people are tuning in and the YouTube leave comments. You know, there's a this young black suburban we should feature, and you know, we'll look into different people Definitely. too. But not just young black suburbans, though. We, we yeah, everybody. Young, we actually, <laughs> young people, anybody <laughs> with a good story. Every we want to talk young to you. suburban is a young black suburban. Yeah. Um. So. Thanks, Demo in the Flush, for being on the podcast. Yeah, yeah Bro, you, you didn't you didn't give a tag. We're gonna post your tags on the on the songs that we're gonna play. But what is your uh, just 
Give it, it, to give it to him. Give it to him. My Instagram? Yeah, your yeah, Instagram. Uh, uh, my Instagram is Demo in Flesh. D-E-M-O-I-N-T-H-E. Flesh. Yeah. <laughs> and is that how, how can they get your music as well? So my music, uh, you can find me on Spotify yeah, and SoundCloud. Uh, Demo in Flesh. Everything is, Demo yeah, Demo in Flesh is, is all me. You know what I mean? So just look me up on Google. Everything's gonna pop up. Yeah, go on should. SoundCloud, yeah. check them out. Yeah. There's some samples up there of uh, upcoming works on the actual Odyssey, but yeah, you start coming back up on the SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. 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 talking to Get pop. All right, that's Dibble in the flush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks, right? Yeah. 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 You can leave a sweet escape. Feels like we're in harm in each other's space. Here we go, the Skies, you can't find that on land. Oh, how time flies. I hope you understand. It's okay to feel lost, that's part of the plan. Now, come with me, love. Just hold on to my hand. I just wanna be the right. Since you've been